Good evening, Brummies, and welcome to Poker TV. We're currently in the Heidi smoking area with Lemmy's Poker. And we got a fucking bag! Last Saturday, I played the Wizop C ladies event at Dusseldorf, Nottingham. I had a great run and played one of the craziest hands of my life as well as flopping quads. So get comfortable because I'm going to take you on a journey. In terms of life story, I got a bit cold. I know, tough times. £230 buy-in. Um, but shout out to my dad who is taking half my action. I'm hoping that he gets a return on that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. To the guy who complained that there was too much life story on my videos, like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just won't talk about myself ever again. Only poker, strictly poker. Although, if you didn't know already, you can actually just skip past that part. Um, I thought guys were good at doing that. My strategy going in this time was to use a lot of aggression. Um, you can find sometimes that at this level in ladies events people can play quite face up so I wanted to attack people and see what I could get away with. This includes a lot of bluffing, things like check raising, squeezing, 3 bet bluffing, all, all of that. I wanted to throw that in there and that's what I did. So the first big hand I got into was against the lady on my right. So this is the second level, the blinds are 100, 200. We both I've got about 30k, she's got about 25k, um, pretty deep stacked. So someone on the button raises to 500k, not 500k, getting a bit ahead of myself here. Okay, <laughs> someone on the button raised to 500. The lady on the small blind re-raises three bets up to 2k and I pick up pocket jacks in the big blind. Now there is definitely a case to just flat call here. Um, but I wasn't sure what the button was going to do and I didn't know if I wanted to play jacks in a multi-way pot. So I decided to put in a four bet, button folded and the small blind called. So you're thinking now, what does she have? What's what's um, three bet calling there? But the fact that she then called my re-raise, you know, what, what can I put her on there? You know, anything from pocket eights up to aces maybe. I'd like to think she'd shove with aces. But then there is a case for saying that five betting is not a good strategy. She's also got ace king for sure. Ace queen, ace jack. Probably not ace jack off, ace jack suited, ace queen, ace queen suited. King queen suited, definitely. Probably would fold, fold out jack queen suited there. So we get to a flop and we hit a set. Amazing. However, the flop is 10 jack queen. And what does that mean? That means that any ace king is a straight hit. And what do I think she has most likely here? Ace king. I continuation bet here for 2k, which is around 20% of the pot, um, fairly standard after a four bet pot, again, quite small. Um, and she raises me, <laughs> like brilliant, okay. Raises up to 5k, it's quite a small raise. Let's just call and hope for a board pairing. Like that would really, that would really help me out here. So I, um, so I called the 5k. The turn is a two, it was a blank, doesn't change anything. The board is completely rainbow, so there's not really any flush bluffs here. And she shoves all in for her remaining 15k. Like, it's already a big pot, so she just gets it straight in. So I go into the tank. Um, I'm throwing away my time cards. I'm thinking, she just has ace-king, she just has ace-king, she just has it. So then I start thinking, what are bluffs? Ace-queen, yeah, we put that in her range, but would she play it this way? Would she want to go all in there? I guess she has the ace king blocker by having the ace um, and top pair, but I don't know if she'd do that. I don't know if she'd play this way with aces or kings either. Tens, definitely. Tens are an option, but so are queens. So tens and queens rule themselves out. So what we're we looking at here, we're looking at some combinations of possibly ace queen suited um, and also ace king there's 16 combinations of ace king there's some ace queen suited king jack suited king nine suited i think she would have followed pre-flop so i tanked for a while and i made a big fold um so that was a really weird pot to start off with and i asked her if she had ace king and she said maybe so 
Make of that what you will. I think that means yes. Hmm. Let me know in the comments what you would have done here in this spot. Would you have made the call or would you have folded and just waited for a better spot? I must admit, I couldn't stop thinking about that hand for a long time. Um, I think in terms of GTO, that is most likely a call. But when you're playing low stakes, when someone's putting their whole tournament life on the line quite early on, um, people aren't going to balance that completely with bluffs. <laughs> The blinds go up and we end up losing a couple of other pots and going all the way down to 12 big blinds. Luckily, we managed to shove and win the blinds, so we managed to grow our stack back up. The girl on my right then got into a bit of a nightmare tangling with the gambler. Now, there was a lady in seat two. I was in seat nine. There was a lady in seat two who was just playing absolutely wild. This crazy old lady um, just doing some mad stuff and people weren't people weren't looking her up people weren't calling her um and the one time they did call her she had it so what is she doing is she just hitting it every time <laughs> remember this gambler because she comes back into the story a bit later so we've gone all the way down to 12 big blinds and we've managed to grow our stack back up and luckily got away with a few things <laughs> okay so now we're at level four the blinds are 200 400 i've got 12k 30 big blinds you know we're sitting fairly happy. I pick up pocket eights under the gun, so I stick in a raise, get called by the cutoff and the big blind. And to my amazement, the flop came down 886. Wow. I have not had quads before, apart from when I played my best mates here, when I got quad fours, and I was really angry because um, I'd never had quads before and I got it against some players who didn't even know how to play. But I got quads right there, and I think I can be quite impressed. I did not flinch at all. So I've got quads, big blind checks, I check behind. I can't really bet here, I take up too much of the board, and the button bet behind me, um, around 30% pot, 1k into 3, um, big blind folded, and I just called. So the turn was a 9, which means that 7 is 4 ways to a straight. I check again and the button bet 3k. So I thought here is a good spot to check raise um, because they can be hitting this board sometimes. And if they do happen to have an over pair, they should be able to call. So this is a spot here where if I had a7 suited, I'd probably check raise as a bluff. Let me know if you would raise here or just wait for the river. What I didn't want to do is call here, get to the river and go check, check. So I wanted to put in a raise um, because there are bluffs that I would have in this range. I put in a raise to 8k and she folded. Unfortunate, but... Um, can't complain. After quads, I didn't really get much going. I was kind of down to about 20 bigs for a little while, just grinding that out for an hour or so. Bit of a weird start with the old um, set of jacks versus what I think she had was ace king, I'm pretty sure. But who knows? I will go through that. Um, Won a couple of small pots and going back after the break with 30 big blinds, so not a bad, not a bad place to be really. So then I get moved to the feature table on kind of one of the middle stacks until a lady in mid position shoved in her ace five suited and I picked up ace king with big blind. Easy call, cool. <laughs> take her chips. I then pick up queens and three bet over a razor. Um, she goes all in on the flop because it's all low cards. She turns over pocket queens and I flip over the pocket kings. Not that I slow rolled her, but yeah, took her chips too. That's poker, baby. Shout out to my Irish friend, Mary. Um, we kept having a joke that we kept picking up 4-7 uh, and then I picked it up at the same time. Um, it was definitely the dealer, um, terrible dealers at the sort I'm joking. 4-7 is a recurring theme throughout this vlog. Don't, don't forget, don't forget about 4-7. So we're starting to build a bit of a stack um, and just before the final table I had another good spot. The cutoff raises to 7k, I pick up 7-8 suited and make the call. The small blind raises to 21k, this is a bit of a small raise for the small blind and the cutoff called so you know I decided to put in the call here, wasn't completely sure if it was the right thing to do but I did, worth playing a big pot in position. Flop comes down 5-6 jack rainbow. The small blind makes a continuation bet of 21k. The cutoff calls 21k. 
So I thought, this is a great spot to squeeze. I've got an open ender here. It's fairly unlikely that the small blind has missed this board completely. You know, they might have an overpaired, they might have tens, queens, kings, aces. They're still uncapped, but they might also have ace, king, ace, queen, ace, ten suited, ace, five suited, all of this stuff. So I put in the squeeze and I put in 49k and as soon as I put it in, I was like, that's too small. I should have bet more. But they both folded. So they were talking about it straight after and saying, such a small raise size, like definitely a set. Like, yeah, definitely, definitely a set. Well done, good fold, good fold. We took that down and that was a big pot because you know, three bet pot, multi-way, really nice to take that one down. That pot actually made a big difference to going into the final table because um, the final table was not long after that. So we made the final table and I've got a pretty nice looking stack over here. But oh my god, we've made a final table for last nine and I am up there in chips. I've got about 250k. Let's see if we can win a bracelet. A ring. Wait, what is it? It's a ring, innit? <laughs> final table strategy was to try and bully people with my bigger stack. And particularly because there were two short stacks on my left, I was raising three X on the button and calling a lot in position, trying to float and trying to find those spots where I can apply pressure to the shorter stacks. So we get off to a good start at the final table. I'm chip leading and I'm trying to bully people and apply my pressure. Seat one has been all in a few times. She's been quite short and she's managed to um, uh, double up somehow. Anyway, she I raised with king queen suited late position she shoved out of the big blind called her off um which i was a bit nervous about because you're shoving a lot of aces there but she only had 10 big blinds so i called her off and luckily she didn't and she didn't get lucky on me so i took her chips and now we're down to eight then i knock out seat four she goes all in with ace nine off i pick up pocket queens re-raise all in and she doesn't hit an ace she's out taking a little break the six left and i'm chip leading um i'm very nervous don't tell anyone um but yeah it's been all right nick some blinds a few short stacks two more get knocked out and we are down to five handed this is the bubble four handed now this is where i started getting a little bit out of line you can have a look at the evidence here where I messaged my coach saying, just monged off a few chips. Now I did, I was trying to put a lot of pressure on people as chip leader. However, I got a bit ahead of myself and ended up in a bit of trouble. What I was trying to do was the lady who I said always see bets, I was trying to float her. So I called her in position without really anything. I wanted to call her here and see if she fired again. But when she fired again on the turn, I can't really call that. That's when my coach showed me to just tighten up and start playing a bit more sensible again. So I did. But then the gambler, she took out seat three. I can't even remember what she had. Seat three, knocked out, off you go, see you later. We're four-handed, we're in the money, we're absolutely buzzing. Well, I'm buzzing because I've won 600 pounds. I also got into a bit of trouble against um, the, the sea better lady in seat seven. I raised pocket nines under the gun and she called with aces. I see bet the flop, went check check turn and she bet the river and I called her off. Um, so I lost a big stack then. However, if she'd have gone all in pre-flop, I probably would have had to call. So I could have been knocked out right there. Thank you for not playing an optimal strategy. So she had more chips than me. Um, I wasn't the shortest, but I was third out of four. And then I came head to head with the gambler. She raised in late position. There was a call from the small blind and a call from myself with 10-7 suited. The flop came down 9-7-4, two spades. Pretty nice spot there. And the gambler open shoves. Big blind folds, easy call for me. She shows over a card, 2-10 of hearts. And she knocked her out. So we're now down to three handed. Now comes the craziest hand of my life. So, so the lady on my right raises in the small blind and I call with eight, four suited on the big blind. The flop is seven, seven, four. So that's good. That's good for the big blind range um, and not necessarily for her small blind um, raising range there. 
She bets, I call. Didn't really see a need to raise. The turn is a four. Okay, so we've got a full house, right? Um, she bets again. And I call again. What do I do here? Do I raise? I don't know. What could she have here that she's betting with? An overpair? Ace, an ace? Five, eight, suited? It's just random. Like, what is she betting here with? And what does she think I'm calling with? And the river is a seven. Right. So this is what you call a counterfeit pot. There is a full house on the board and the four that I have in my hand now means F all. And she bets around just over half pot into this massive pot already. Um, and I know essentially I'm calling to either chop it or for her to win it with an overpair. Any overpair that I thought she might have now is gonna win the pot. So I go into the tank and I'm thinking, this is just crazy. I just don't know what to do here. Now, what would you do right here? Because my coach said, snap, call. Cool. But for me, I was like, this is just crazy. I mean, there's a small chance she has a seven. I don't know if she'd have bet every street with an overpair. It seems like she could just be randomly bluffing because she does like to see bet and she does like to double barrel. What do I do? What would you do? Let me know in the comments. Her story just didn't add up. And the way that she was betting, I just got this feeling that she was bluffing. Anyway, I flicked in the chip, I made the call, and she shows over Jack-10 offsuit. So just a complete bluff out of nowhere. And she goes, oh, I thought I had a seven. <laughs> like, come on, dude, you did not think you have a, had a seven. Seven what? So next up, I'm on the small blind with King-9 off. I raise it up and I get a call from the big blind on my left. The flop was king, queen, jack. So I've hit top pair, decent kicker, and I decide to make a continuation. She makes the call. The turn is a six, doesn't really add anything, and I thought I could check here, bit of pot control. She's only got 20 bigs, could induce a bluff. Check, check. The river is a four, so it doesn't complete anything. Nothing really changes here and I check one more time and she's just like, get all in. She made this like noise in a way that was like, she was a little bit fed up and it just, again, it didn't add up. Like what is she going all in here with? It just, again, it didn't add up. So I went into the tank for a little while, used a few time cards. Once again, felt like she was bluffing. Obviously like her shove there turns my king into a bluff catcher but she checked back the turn. I was just thinking she would have either raised the flop or bet on the turn, but she checked back the turn. So what has this four changed on the river? And why is she going all in? Is it just a stab to try and get me to fold? So I put in the call and she shows over a pair of fours. So I'm glad I just went with my gut because my intuition was telling me she doesn't have anything. And then she didn't. That's poker, baby. So we made it to heads up. <laughs> so at this point, like the adrenaline is absolutely flowing. Like I can't drink any more coffee because I'm physically shaking. Okay, we're officially heads up. We've got my new coach, Paul. My new coach, hi. He wants to be my coach now. I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna say win. <laughs> you are. So shout out to Paul, my new coach. Um, He's an absolutely brilliant coach and a really good player. I'll put a link to his 2 plus 2 down below, but definitely check him out. He gave me some great tips, like stack, how to stack my stack, like how to stack my chips. And he also told me that at one point when the counterfeit board came down on the river, I actually rolled my eyes. He was like, careful of live tells. You, I literally saw you roll your eyes at the river card. He basically told me, you're a better player than her, so try and play every hand. Normally going into a heads up match, you would need to have some kind of raising strategy, three betting strategy. But he said to me, try and just play the pot, limp in, and then try and beat her on the flop and later streets. So that's exactly what I did. I limped absolutely everything. I limped aces at one point. Here we are, heads up. Until it came to the final hand. I limped in jack four off. Why not? It's a great hand to play. And she checked in the big blind. The flop came down, 6-4-4. Four, four. So she checked. I knew that if I bet here, she would fold. And I wanted to trap her. Turn comes an eight. 
She goes all in. I snap call, throw over the Robbie, Jack four off, got you. She's got a pair of eights and we are happy. So now we just have to wait for a river card to come down and we've won the tournament. The river comes down a blank. I am absolutely buzzing. Quite an anti-climatic video of me just going, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> but I won. But I was just mind blown. I couldn't couldn't comprehend it what had just happened. What has just happened? I've just won with the Robbie. I won. So we won. We won the tournament. Crazy, right? <laughs> first final table, first win, like absolutely buzzing. We get set up for the winner's pick and we take a picture with the Robbie, the famous hand that um, Robbie played against Garrett. Um, what a great hand to win with. However, then the dealer was like, oh, well, you need to get a picture with your favorite hand. I was like, okay got to be pocket nines then so then they set the board up um that i had quad nines and then they posted that picture on twitter and everyone's like nice win with quad nines that'll do it <laughs> time for a bit what just happened We've made it back. What a crazy, crazy day. Um, and I'm going out because it's time to celebrate. Let's go. Good evening, Grummies, and welcome to Poker TV. We're going in the hiding smoking area with a Miss Bonnie. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas. just want to tournament. It means that I actually get to go and play a tournament in Vegas the tournament of champions and this tournament is going to be against like actually good players like really good players that have won hundreds of thousands of pounds to win a ring so i won 2670 still waiting on the dates for the tournament champions but we will definitely be going to vegas if it's on i'm already gathering the entourage my brother and my best mates want to come along and they're going to be doing some crazy outfits and following me around um, none of them know how to play poker, but it's great. If I do go, there's going to be daily content, daily vlogs. Make sure you subscribe below to follow the journey. There's so much to do. I'm going to need a whole new wardrobe. I might actually have to get good at poker as well. Thinking back to a year ago, I had literally just, just seen a YouTube video on poker and I was starting to get interested in it. So I'm going to be going to Vegas. So the bankroll challenge means that I've got around 3K now. So if I'm able to get some sponsors or some backers, I will be able to go to Vegas. Please contact me on Instagram if you're interested. Any coaching, backing, sponsorships, anything, any advice. If you've been before, if you've played before, I am here. Please send me a message. I need your support. I need it. There's a link to my buy me a coffee. If you want to give me any donations, they will go to Vegas. They will go straight into gambling. Like, I can't express how important this is that you do <laughs> help me. Also, shout out to top poker streamers who did an article on me. They were going to do one on me before I won this ring, but it just makes it even better. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching. What a crazy run it's been. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new here. The next things for me is going to be the Dust or Dawn 100. I'm playing a satellite to try and get into online day one. And then I'm planning on playing in the Easter Beast Midlands version at the local. Oh, I should probably get the ring as well. Yeah, here it is. There it is, the ring. I did wear it on the night half, yes. That's poker, baby.